Good evening, everybody out there in Chester County and on my Facebook page. Yes, that's right. I'm back again. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to come outside, he's on City Town Talk again. But man, I'm telling you, I got the dynamic duo on here this evening. I got Charles, Charles and Katina Robinson. Now, look, before we bring you on and unleash them on the community, first of all, I know film ministry is out there in full effect. I know that Rowdy Munch is on here. So I want to <laughs> say all from Film Ministry, share this video and tag me on it because what we want to do is, I always have trouble with this, but what I want to do is we want to see the comments as they are coming. And it's, for some reason, I always forget. Let's see if I got it. If I got, no, I need y'all to tag me on this. Stop playing because they're going to want to hear from y'all. Uh, Iris Holmes, where you at? Because you're usually the first one on here, except when you're having Bible study. Uh -uh. We're going to talk about y'all Bible study, too, because see, there's some volunteers in your group that they can't do nothing. They, nah, man, I got Bible, I got Bible study tonight. <laughs> I ain't mad at them either. Let me see who I got here. Do I have anybody that has signed in yet? If they haven't, we're going to get them because we're not, we're not going to stop anything. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say a few announcements because we got some announcements before I bring them on. First of all, I want to say, man, I am just so grateful for God's grace and mercy. Look, man, I went from homeless. I got a house, man. I got this big microphone all in my face and everything. I just brought me a Ninja Foodie 501 grill. Can't tell me I can't cook. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I, look, I'm telling you. So look, I'm going to give you some announcements of what's going on in our community. Tomorrow, CYWA is having senior day. That means you have to be 60 years or older. You come and they got like this box, box food, a box of food. So come up there. Don't come in there with no bootleg, <laughs> no bootleg ID talking about you 60. You know, couldn't wear you 47. This is for people <laughs> and older. God bless them. They deserve it. Uh, rock the vote. I need you to go to my rock the vote page and fill this out. Take this. And on here is a challenge, and it says, write down why, or put it in the comments or post why you vote. And then tag 10 people. Don't tag me 10 times. Tag some of your friends so maybe they'll take the challenge. We wanted to go viral to this whole community because, as you can tell, that you've been sleeping under a rock. We need to vote November 3rd. Ain't nobody playing with y'all. So that's it for that. One other thing, Saturday. Women Destined for Change will be having a clothing giveaway. Get down there, 427 East Lincoln Highway. They're going to be doing it. Uh-oh, uh -oh, they go Asia Hines and Sonar Brown. Oh, Lord, Sonar Brown was on there. It's getting ready to be some trouble. I see it. Oh, <clears throat> okay. When they, oh, don't they even take the, mm, They did it. They did it. They did it. Okay. Now, so Saturday, get down there. I forget the time. Uh, I will tell you tomorrow because that's important. And there's no shame in your game because when I first got here, I was homeless, right? And I told y'all up at the VA, they had a room like that. They didn't have, they didn't have it outside. Eh? There was a room and they just let us loose in the room. I came out with more clothes than prints. So <laughs> with that being said, now next week's guest, I'm gonna say this because after that, we turn them loose. And I know uh, y'all ain't gonna wanna hear too much out of me. Oh, they go Asia and them, oh, Asia. I like, appreciate y'all so much. Next week's guest, Crystal Thomas, she's going to be introducing, we're going to talk about her truck, Simply Shrimp. And her, I think her grand opening will be on 3rd and Lincoln Highway on the 23rd. She's outfitted a truck. It looks like there's a restaurant. <laughs> she got a store in a truck. Man, I love that. I love that. Wow. Spirits. Crystal's been doing it forever, though. Heather Graham, who is the CEO, uh-oh, they go Kendra Wilson, she just checked in, and Heather Grayberg is with Revival Productions. She's got all kinds of productions and everything else. I did see one that said Dream Girls. I said, okay, we got to stay culturally, culturally relevant, but these teeth get me every time. We must stay culturally relevant when we're having shows. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, I will be interviewing the CEO or COO or C some O whatever of Towers Health. That is the gentleman who is in charge. You can bring them on screen too if there's somebody over there who's in charge of Tower Health, AKA Brandywine. I will be interviewing them next week. 
so we can find out how they're going to help us in our community in regards to health, wealth, and everything else. So right now, normally, I read I read my guest bio. I'm not going to do it tonight. This is all totally together, different type of set right here. What I want y'all to, they haven't been warned how we're going to do this. So it's going to be a <laughs> so, <laughs> so what uh -oh. we going to do. Now, it's, this is going to be a tag team, so, some, so one of y'all going to have to know when to start, stop, and everything. Do y'all work together? So the first thing I want you to do is just introduce yourselves and say hi to the community out there that's watching. What's up, everybody? This is Pastor E. And I'm Katina. Raz, we're so, we're so excited to be here on, on, on this, such, this prestigious <laughs> um, <laughs> Zoom interview platform Absolutely. with what with, with whom I might call the mayor of Coatesville. <laughs> this is so stupid. I, look, I'm, I'm more excited than y'all. We're going to talk about that shirt you got on too. First of all, you know Iris home. She's normally first and she's first right now. She's like, good evening. Danico Gibson from It Takes a Village says, hey family. Dana Bricker says, hello. Tanoa, why baby Fagan? Come on, Tanoa. <laughs> Dang, I don't even know her. She never, she never tunes in. It must be because y'all. Man, that's our Harrisburg connection. Okay, because I know my regulars. Okay, she, Kendra Wilson. Kendra Wilson. Y'all don't know Kendra Wilson used to work for me at Footstop. She was she was dynamic even then. Okay, so Donald Anderson and 14 others who are our names aren't up there are watching. Asia Han sends multiple colored hearts to y'all and i want to thank y'all for tuning in tanisha st john that's right post office extraordinaire <laughs> look, 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 look. yeah that's right man i looked at y'all bio man and it was like too deep i'm gonna tell you something i needed the shovel so deep i needed to fill it up so i said fine why don't you just try and pull something out of there and we're just gonna sit there and talk all right is that that's okay with y'all okay that's good. all right so i did the greeting i did my announcements i set up my audience i gotta follow my bullet points because I forget mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, first thing I want to do is tell y'all why I picked y'all, why I wanted y'all. Because of the way you look right now, all smiley, giggling, got all them teeth in your mouth and everything. I said, man, I need that kind of spirit on the show. Because yes, my, my pastor says over the pulpit, he said, look, if you got the joy of the Lord in your life, why don't you inform your face? <laughs> well... You know, you know how we say we got the joy of the Lord, but we always look like we mad at somebody. Yes, sir. Anything going right. Well, I can't tell if things are going right or wrong. Y'all like, because y'all always skinning and grinning. And I said, I need yeah. to have them in my life. So that's <laughs> my reason. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Roberta Steyer Showell. She's one of my mentors. She said, hey, fam. Stephanie Lee is on. To Noah, she said, it's, it's y'all all, 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 LOL. Sonara, she's another one of our volunteers who won't do anything in some Bible study. <laughs> Not, yeah, look, let me tell you something. I almost didn't like y'all for a minute. I'm gonna tell you the truth, right? Because Sonora, who else? Iris home, and, and there's a couple in your flock, man. You know, we, we're always doing volunteer stuff, volunteer mm -hmm. stuff. But when it comes like when we have our board meetings and stuff like that, they ain't coming. I forget what they Bible study is, but they ain't coming, and I know that. And I ain't mad at them either, because that's what they're supposed to be. All right, let me stop running my mouth, because that's too much. Oh, man, that's funny. Okay, <laughs> open it up. Let the world know, how did y'all guys meet? Now, how did this thing work out? Y'all, oh, uh, man, bring it you on. Would, you would go with that. <laughs> listen, listen, I need to let everybody know, everybody know, This is you hear it from my mouth, Katina and I were actually a blind date. What? She will confirm. Yes, she will confirm. Oh, yes. Um, um, a lady that used to go to the church I was attending in Philadelphia, um, and she went to another church, and she said she saw him uh, marching the choir around. You remember the <laughs> choir march? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and she said she just thought she heard my name. And her husband said she was not allowed to fix people up. So on the slide, she gave me his number. Yes. And um, yeah. yeah. And, and we and we talked over the phone for a while. I didn't even know what she looked like. I didn't know uh -huh. what she looked like. And 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 listen, a couple of times I called, right? I called her, but she didn't seem like she was interested in the call. But I was like, she was always doing something. Someone was always in the bathroom. Mm. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna call her back. But but lo and behold, she came she came past my house because I, I lived in Philly. Her church was in Philly, and um, on the same avenue, Lehigh Avenue. It was her what? birthday, 
and Father's Day, like at the same time that mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And she came by and, and I had never seen her before. She knocked on the door and I, that was my first time seeing her, man. And I was like, okay, okay, we can work. We can work, uh, <laughs> we can work, man. And, and ever since then, you know, we, we, we kept calling each other, kept talking. Um, and I knew she lived in Coatesville. But um, we were a blind date. So we wait, so wait. I'm in the studio all hours of the night, yeah. he says. And yeah. I'm not really interested in a long distance relationship. You out there in Coatesville. So this is probably not going to be too serious, is what he had said. In a roundabout way. Yeah. Um, and, and man, she stole my heart, man. Yeah. Stole, stole my heart. Coats, Coatesville girl, country girl. Man, I was wide open. Oh, man, Sally Bobby, I was playing hard to get at some point in time in that relationship. Because she was reeling you in when, when she acted like she wasn't interested. She was reeling you in like you was a car. Listen, man. you know what? To be honest, um, I had, had been down the road and um, I had just realized that, you know what? I really need to be celibate. And I had been, and then I went away to college, and then I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I need to be celibate. I've got dates and stuff. And so I was at this place where I was a little skeptical. So now I'm catching feelings over the phone. I don't know what he looks like. That's a problem. You know, <laughs> like, what if there wasn't an attraction? Long story short, um, there was a physical attraction. Now that now I needed to know about the spiritual. And um, the, Lord, the Lord gave me somebody um, that, yeah. that is so spiritual. And, and yeah. we dated for five years. Wow. Um, five years, man. Celibate. Celibate, five years. Um, we had a lot of Lord in you. We, we, yeah, man. We had to get double portions of the Lord. <laughs> Listen, for real, for real. And this is this is kind of like, we're on something that I love to talk about because this is what we usually tell young couples who are dating. Man, yeah. listen, when I dated her, I didn't date just her. I dated her and about four of her other girlfriends. And we, we attributed that to dating responsibly because uh -huh. it wasn't me looking at her eyes across the table. I had to be accountable <laughs> to four other women oh. and they made sure we went home at the end of the night. Oh, and man. I, and I, I appreciate it. <laughs> you might have to put this in a book for, for singles yes. that's dating, yes, man. I'm man. liking this, I'm liking this. But wait a minute. See, I'm getting off the beaten path because the more you talk, the more I can think of stuff. Who Now, who's originally from Philly? Cause I Lee, man. now you said Allegheny Avenue. I mean, not Allegheny. You said Lee. What part of Lee? So I, I when I met her, I was on twenty eight hundred block of Lehigh Avenue, uh -oh. and the church was on Fifth. Okay. In Lehigh, so you know that, that was right there. So I'm I'm born and raised, man, in, in Philly, North Philadelphia, most of my life, most of my oh. life, man. But wait a minute, but, I lived on Harold Street. Does that ring a bell? Harold sound familiar? Yep. Yeah, Harold's, Harold's right around the corner. It's right off of Twenty Eighth and Lehigh, between Lehigh and what's the next street over? Somerset or Cumberland? Uh, it might be between Cambria Lehigh and Cumberland. Or... Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I lived there, there. Till they beat me up and chased me out of there. I moved back to South Philly. But that's besides the point. That was in the gang war days. You don't know nothing about that. I'm seventy. Listen, years man. Old, man. Listen. Well, listen. Listen. I was I was born and raised in Harrison Plaza, which was right across from um, from what's the other Richard, uh, Richard Allen. Allen. Whoa. So 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 I know about Richard Allen. I was in Harrison Plaza, you know. So I know a little bit about gang wars, but my dad, my dad was not playing that. Okay. I, I was more afraid of my dad than I was afraid of gangs. <laughs> that's all right, and that's where it should be. But look, you must have a fan club here because I'm going. We're going to always acknowledge the viewers because that's important. We already talked about Stephanie Lee. I'm gonna wave to you, and you need to go somewhere. Keisha Tools is watching. Carla Kelly, that's my girl, Killer Carla, and Jordan Krantz is watching Kendra. Hey, hey, Jordan. Kendra said, I'm so glad you called her back. Oh, Kendra said, she's so glad you called her back. Bless her back. He, he ain't man. no quitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was home, said, love was calling. That sounds like a rock and roll record. I like that. Josh Kranz, he said, we love y'all. Hey, Josh, what's up, Josh? Shit. And you know, they had their banquet today. So you know, he must really, really want to see y'all because I know they've, they've been working and doing their thing. Oh, Sonora God. said, no, he didn't. I don't know what that's in reference to, but God bless you. Anyway, Shannon Hire, Candace Armory, Walt Washington. I'm tired of all these names. We're going to keep moving on. Marlo Shockley. Okay, look, look, I got some questions now. Hey, my wife, she's in there on the sofa watching. Hey, baby. Uh, all right, now, where was that? Okay, we're talking about courting. Now, how long y'all been married now? 18 years. 18 Ooh. years. Y'all um, still like each other, huh? 
Man, listen, this this is my queen right here, dude. Oh. Like this 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 is my queen. Like I don't I, when I say my life changed after I married my best friend, absolutely changed. And she know I say this. This is my queen, man. And so I do my best to treat her as such because she's amazing. Um, wow. I have I have what I call my superwoman, and I'll tell you why. Because she bore three of my kids. We're parents of triplets, man. And I said, this woman must love me to carry triplets. That came out not looking like it. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> throw that out there. Man, that's starting to look like it. They, they look starting to look like it. Man, yes, yes. So so I'm um uh, I'm absolutely in love. This is this is um this is it. This is it until he come and get us. Right. <laughs> so now, Katina, you're originally from Coesville, right? Born and born and raised, yes. Yeah. And you're a you're a Christmas. Yes. Because there's a lot of Christmases. I mean, I don't know. I'm not born and raised here, but I've been here 32 years, so I do know some of them. So that's 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 amazing. That's amazing. Now let me see what else I want to talk about. You already talked about right. your children. Here's something that caught my attention uh, as I followed y'all. I, I followed y'all and I couldn't come because I was not allowed on school property at the time. But you guys were involved with robotics with a good friend of mine who lives out in Carver Court. So how come I can't remember her name? Sister uh, Octavia. 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 Tell, tell us a little bit about that robotics thing. What was that about? Yeah. Listen, so um, as, as you know, or may, maybe you don't, um, our passion is um, community and up, real, uh, up build um, academic, spiritual, economic, et cetera. So we always, uh, we consider ourselves a community center that happens to be a church or yeah. a community. Um, yeah. And so we always wanted to have classes and we will, you know, as we get even more space. Um, but I, I pull, poured out the dream or the vision um, to Octavia and Kendra and they had been dreaming simultaneously, all of uh, both of them amazing in their own right. Um, Octavia with her her um, scientific mind and her role at the high school, mm -hmm. um, Kendra with her role with the young ladies and her yes. anointing yes. And, and her street cred. Yes. Um, and mm -hmm. some cataclysmic thing happened and um, Fig 3 was born yes. um, where um, G3 and Forward Impact came together and we offer, and it's community funded. Like the mm -hmm. community just donates yes. and, and helps pay for these young ladies. I mean, with their little lab coats and robotics um, because we believe that there's untapped potential. I've always been so proud of Coatesville right. and, and right. the, the rich um, soil. You know Coatesville's rising, just, just yeah, in yeah. case. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Listen, <laughs> and, and the timing is bananas. So um, it was just it was just incredible. And things came against it and fell over almost simultaneously yes. just for the just to hear the Lord say, I got you, I got this. So we were able to open up um, a, a, a robotics program um, that we will expand it once yes. the world comes back together, yes. even to include boys. So right now it's for, for young women. Um, we want to see them uh, see them in space. We want to see them with the engineering jobs. Yes see them so love I, I really loved it man i was trying to follow it as much as i could man i, I wanted to be there so bad i said that woman that woman leave me alone let me you let me go up in that district but anyway okay now were you guys always raised in the church or is this uh an acquired taste Woo. man I, I i'm a church i'm a church baby i'm a church baby as far as i can remember i have been in church and the funny thing is, you know, at a certain age, my parents asked, I think it was around 14 and 15, they said, listen, we're not going to force you to go to church uh, anymore. Now, you know, I guess they were seeing that I was getting mature and they were allowing me to have some space. It might have been even 16. We're not going to make you go. But man, I kept going. I, I loved going to church. I loved the music. I had friends there. And so I continued to go and not, not realize it that God was going to uh, do something in my heart and uh, have me in this space that I'm in right now. But yes, um, man, I'm a church baby. <laughs> I'm a church baby. What about you, young lady? Listen, um, I, <laughs> it's funny. I am, I am a church baby. Um, my, my grandmother took me initially because um, my mom and dad hadn't gotten back to church yet. Um, I remember, <laughs> Daddy. I'm sorry if you're watching. I told this story the other day. Uh, he used to roll his weed on the on the kitchen table okay. when I was three, you know, and sell it. 
and uh, out the house. And something I said, he said when I was about three or four, uh, made him, him stop. He went back to church and um, he trustee, deacon, um, minister, et cetera, pastor. Yes. And I mean, family devotions, Bible yeah. study. Um, that was right, started at, uh, when we were on Elm Street and um, ended up the rest of my days in Rock Run. But I mean, we would be listening to the water and meditating on the goodness of, of Jesus. So um, not religion, but relationship is in there mm. from, yes. from early on. I like that. I like that. Hey, well, look, let me let me just take a second here. Pause for the cause. Uh, <laughs> Danico Gibson said y'all were really social distancing back then. Oh, now all my, all my words want to just disappear. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. She, here. She's talking about the five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's talking about yeah, the five yeah, years. The struggle was real. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that means um, Now, I don't know why. I don't know why all of a sudden all my stuff kind of like just disappeared. And I want to, I want to acknowledge everybody. I'm going to, we're going to keep moving on. I don't know why it did that. Honey, did you do that? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep on moving though. Here, now let me ask you a question. With so many churches in the area, why did you guys decide that you wanted to start one here? Man, listen, <laughs> listen, That's listen. That's a good question. To this day, every now and then, I say, man, what am I doing? There's so many churches here. And um, I'm often reminded, you know, when when we finally knew that we were supposed to launch here, and mm -hmm. my wife will probably tell you that I'm vacillated because I'm saying, man, are we supposed to be here? Are we supposed to be here? There are so many churches here. And, you know, when, I, when God finally showed me that we're supposed to be here, I realized that there was something God wanted to do in this town that had to come from my person. It had to come from us. You know, we brought something to the area that, um, that perhaps there was a generation who was looking for it. Mm -hmm. Because when I finally decided, you know what, we need to launch here, my heart was people aren't coming to church. So why don't we take church to people? And mm -hmm. so my heart was, Man, we can evangelize, we can hand these tracks out all we want to. People are a little tired of church, and the narrative at the time was church hurt. And, um, you know, so that was the kind of thing that we were hearing. And so in my heart, I was saying, God, are you, you want us to launch here? What's going on? So I prayed a while, and I talked to my wife, and she <laughs> praised, praised God for her because she knew what was going on. But um, she just let me work it out because she was just simply following me. And um, we just thought that, you know, there was something that we wanted to, we wanted to demonstrate through worship and praise. And there was a posture with trusting the word of God that we just thought we're going to bring this no matter who comes. And so while there was a lot of churches, we just felt, felt like God wanted to use our voices uniquely. And so that kind of just tipped it over. So, so, so did you, or did you guys always see yourself as pastoring a church did you ever did you have ever had that thought in your heart or mind or, or is this like a calling on how this thing come about listen that is an excellent question <laughs> because <laughs> let me let me just say that well i grew up where i was taught that women don't preach anyway so i was really turning a deaf ear to the call yeah. so i was ministering without a title i was just doing my passion um and i don't need a title that's why I won't get into that, but I, I, I'm not into the title. I'm into the, the mission, the assignment. I see people, I see heart, I see souls. So I never thought I would preach, first of all. Um, and growing up as a pastor's daughter, I, I loved, um, loved how we were brought up. And my brother and I, <laughs> we were just laughing about how we never knew who we were having dinner with. Um, because they would bring people in off of the street. They would bring people straight out of prison and they'd be ministering to them at our dinner table. And we, we always were in and out of people's lives mm -hmm. with mission. And um, so that was in my heart. Again, no title. So this handsome fella waited till I was good and in love and locked in <laughs> to let me know. Because I, I was also never going to marry a preacher. <laughs> To, to let me know <laughs> but it when yeah. the call draws you you do it without yeah. a title so yeah. i was ministering to people in the grocery store yeah. just just to minister to help their lives get better so um yeah it's it's in there it's a it's a yeah. call I, my drive was always music most people don't know this but i sang r&b for years i was a, i was an r&b singer writer producer 
um, close to signing contracts and just kind of being out of here. Um, I had a group and everything. And so I often use my skill set in church. And there were moments where when I saw the preacher, I said, man, I, I think, you know, at 14 and 15 and 16, I, I thought, man, God, God, I can do that. You know, it's the thought I had. But there was just a point where, man, as I continued to go, the, the sound of his voice and the pull on my heart got greater and greater. And I never just ran <laughs> toward it. I just knew that at some point, you know, I started falling in love with the word of God. And, you know, that was a big deal for me. And I felt more alone because while my friends were going one way, I, I felt I felt like, man, God, you're calling me to something different. And I always wanted for the kingdom of God to, to, to create their own lane, their own passion. So that's kind of where I am. And then, you know, I wound up, you know, joining the church that she was in and her dad is vicious. I mean, that man can preach. <laughs> he, Pastor Christmas can preach and, you know, so I started at one church and I knew I was called and then I transferred over to True Vine Worship Center and, um, you know, he just developed me. And so we both got, well, she got licensed to minister and I got licensed and we both got ordained um, as reverends. So, you know, I, I think she just knew after, you know, I can't not be, I can't be ordained and her not know that this dude, something's up with us. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. Okay, let's, let's yes. get into some people here. Okay, Sonora says she loves the shirt and we're going to talk about that shirt in a minute. Faith Rosa is watching. Hey, Faith. Priscilla Nelson Ojeda, one of my favorites. Ms. Arnett Lewis, good to see you. Crystal Jones Lowry, Tootie Boy, my dream team member. Portia Graham. Uh, uh, hey, Portia. Sonora said, go ahead and sing a note for us. Hey, this is, this ain't Sunday's best, Sonora. I'll take over. I got this. Said, sing a note. Yeah, she wants y'all to sing now. Yeah. Nah. All right, nah. but look, okay. Now, where did the name Film Ministry come from? Whose idea was that? Well, it was, it was given to me, you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I was just, I, I mean, you know, I was just here just thinking about, okay, God, you know, we finally moved from, you know, just Bible study and I was just kind of looking for a name and God was just speaking to me. And so several names came by and I just was thinking for the impact and for impact is it, but, but we, we, I knew that we wanted to impact lives. So it was for the impact life ministry. It was a, it's a ministry. So the idea is that we want several ministries that will impact the life of people. And so that was what I saw God giving me, that it's not just the church, but we want to impact lives on so many different levels that it's a life ministry. And so Forward Impact Life Ministries is what it, what it became. Okay, on Sundays, your service starts before the church I attend. And when I see your service, Charles, you play in everything but a harmonica, man. How many instruments man. you play, man? You're like Stevie Wonder up there. What's going man. on? Man, listen, I'm, I don't know. You know, that's just one of the talents, you know. I think I get it from my dad. My dad played, like, uh, he plays guitar, and he drug me along. My dad, listen, quartet music. I don't know who's familiar with quartet, but, you know, it's like five or six bros, and they got drums, bass, guitar, and he would drag me around with him, and I would carry instruments. And so eventually he started showing me chords on the guitar, mm -hmm. and from there I really, you know, whatever I picked up, I just learned how to play. So I played drums, then I played, you know, guitar, then I started learning the bass, and then I started playing the keys. And, you know, I played by ear, but, you know, I love it. And so, you know, it, it, it helps me with staying connected with God, especially in worship. Okay, now we're going to talk about the T-shirt you got on. The first time I ever recognized that T-shirt, you guys were doing some sort of you were feeding the community up there at CYWA. I yes. came to some pictures of you guys. Yeah. And I seen these shirts and I've always wondered. <clears throat> tell us what Me We City is all about. Man, so I'm go ahead, you start because I know she likes to say it and I love what she talks about. It. <laughs> <laughs> so um it is a it's a movement that that the Lord gave um Eric and um and at first, I didn't, I didn't quite get it at, until he unfolded it. And me is dealing with me. If, if I get me, my um, physical, uh, my emotional, 
uh, mental and my spiritual right and, and get lined up with the kingdom, then my, my surroundings, my we begins to get impacted and things start to change in my household, around my job, et cetera. And when you start um, with that kind of an energy, mm -hmm. with that kind of a force, the we then can take a whole city. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that's, that's the thing is we desire to empower people yes. to um, impact their me. Yes, yes. So it just starts with one person. If one person can get on fire for God, he or she is going to affect the we. And, and, and so it's, it's designed for one person to transform a whole city. Because if we all get on fire for God, there's a scripture in Acts where the, the Bible says that when, when all of the disciples went to certain towns, when they got there, the people said, these are the men who, were tur who are turning our cities upside down. Mm -hmm. And so they were on so much fire that people knew when they came that they were flipping things over. They were changing minds. They were changing lives and mindsets and bringing the truth of God's word. So, so the idea is, you know, our maxim for the church is we want to impact culture with the kingdom of God. We want to impact culture. So it starts with me, then it's we, then we take the city. It's a city transformation. And so, so that's where it came from. It is designed to transform 19320. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay, there, there goes my young lady friend, Carla Olson. Carla, it is good to see you this evening. Carla is another one who just donates and volunteers her time. And it, it, there's nothing I can't call her for that. She's, she's really right there, even though we fuss at each other all the time. Okay, let's talk about EAMG. Is that some sort of video game? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entertainment and Arts Ministry Group. That's also... Well, you know, it just feels like we were supposed to be leaders because we have so many things that we've kind of, you know, started. Entertainment and Arts Ministry Group is our for-profit uh, part of our, our, our lives and our business. Because my wife, um, hopefully Coatesville knows, we've done several plays in, in Coatesville. So she's a playwright and I'm a songwriter producer. So she writes the plays. I do the music. Um, and so that's the part that we get to express ourselves. Um, and it's just a part of, it's, it's the business part of us. And we just want to promote the kingdom through the performing arts mm -hmm. in every aspect. Like when you think about it, you know, everywhere we look, it's, it's art. And for me, I'm so kingdom, man. I want everything to be an expression of the kingdom of God, the mm -hmm. voice of God, a lifestyle. And that's what it is. And so because when we came together, we really didn't know we had all these things. So she, she's an amazing writer. She, she also has a book out, uh, Shameless Plug, Shameless Plug. No, I was going to say something about it. Come on, it's on my paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she wrote a book, but my man, you know. Oh, what's the name of the book? Come on, keep going. It, it's, it's time to soar. It says, right. it's time to soar. You'd be over this by now if you just let go. And so this is one of her first writings. She has so many other books in her that I'm encouraging her to write. Um, and so I'm so excited for her with this book. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the part where we get to express ourselves from a performing arts aspect. And we bring that to our church. We bring that to our ministry. And we just have, we've yet to really do what we want to do. Um, but it's coming. It, it is coming. I feel, I feel, you know, that we can be creative when expressing the gospel, when preaching the gospel. So yeah, there's so much. And she's, how many plays have you written? I don't know. I haven't counted. Um, when I was at Kings Highway School uh, Elementary, um, my third grade play got chosen for the third grade to perform. Third grade. And um, I think I fell in love with it at, at then. And um, I navigated away from it, but it's it's been in me. And so we're writing plays. We're writing screenplays in our spare time, which yes. is, which is, you know, minimal, yeah. but, um, it's so <clears throat> odd that our church, the acronym is film <laughs> yeah, right. because, um, there's so much drama and, and arts in us. We, we know that we will marry those, those yeah, two we want to do and, and be able yeah. to impact, um, the world, even through our films ultimately. Yeah. yeah. So, so if I may, I would like to extend an invitation to you because I've never heard of your book. I had no idea that you did plays and maybe I'm out of the loop, but feel free. Everybody else uses my timeline to try and do what it is. As long as it's something positive, it's always open. You need to put your book on my timeline. 
the yeah. plays that you do on the time. There's no way, there's no reason in the world I should know what y'all do. Right, right, right. No Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, so that's my invitation now. Thank when you. and how can the public see some of the plays that you do or some of the things that you're doing? How, how can we go about that? So um, I was planning the, the official launch of, of my book, um, and then the world shut down. COVID put a halt to everything. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> uh, I, I had a, a soft reservation on, on the, the launch space. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens in the next coming, coming months, and it will be available on Amazon. Um, I, I went on a ship, a writer's cruise, to launch it. Um, <coughs> Eric and I are writing a play that is called Boxes. Yes. Which is going to be amazing yeah. it's an interactive yeah. drama and and all of our stuff um deals with heart issues so you'll laugh you'll cry you'll sing along um right. at our productions the um last one we did in coatesville i think was um at the fire hall in west end mm -hmm. and the one before that was cywa yes and a lot of the other ones that we did were in philadelphia mm -hmm. um, but we can't wait to unleash because yes. um, people, uh, Pastor Montez Jones, he's he's in all of our productions. Yeah, he was and, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and and he, the last one we did at the, the CYWA was about um, a, a girl that that dealt with a traumatic past, mm -hmm. and you know she got delivered and healed, but she couldn't accept and receive that love. And <laughs> um, so Pastor Jones was in one of the scenes, and I'm a lot of, I mean, yeah, every. Uh, Bub, Bub was uh, my leading, yes, yeah. Eric McCain, Bub, um, he, <laughs> he was our leading actor as well. Um, but Pastor Jones came to me later and he said, sis, I got to sit and actually watch the play because he was, you know, worried about his scenes, you know, in rehearsals and stuff. He said, it gripped my heart because I saw life on Amen. stage. Amen. And that meant so much to me Amen. that one of the actors and several of the actors they felt the play. And that's what we want to do is, is work that you can laugh with it, but you can say, hey, that was me. Right. That was me having to, to eat eat dinner at somebody else's table because my mom was was way strung out and and leave the play hopeful and yes. us partnering with with organizations that after you leave, you can also sign up to therapy or counseling yes. or you know get in touch with. So it's really a holistic thrust yeah. with, with our uh, productions. Yeah. It's an experience. experience. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let me see where I'm at. I'm just so filled with with this, with this story. <laughs> now, look, did y'all guys used to meet up in Fuel City? Yes. Yeah. Man. You had JWTW. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, so JWTW is Java Worship in the Word, okay. and that's the that's the community Bible study. And so, when we when we launched that, um, that was in December 2016. Yes. That we launched, we were in Fuel Coffee House. And church to the world. We just wanted to take the the word of God to the world, and so we started in a coffee house. I remember, we started man. There and um, I remember in that that December we were at the Coatesville parade, and we were handing out our our, our flyers. And I was just like, man, what am I doing? Am I launching here? <laughs> and you never know who's gonna come, right? right? First day, first night, you're like, are people gonna come? Do they want to hear us? Do we have a word? Right, what's right. going on? Right, right, and so. Man, that's just where it started. I'm so grateful because I, I, I believe that God wanted the word to burst forth. He really wants us to go to you, therefore, and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teach them to observe what I've commanded. So it's a go. Oh. And so we were on go. And so, man, we were there um, for, for a month um, at Fuel. And then we got some space at the um, Senior Center on, on Third and Harmony. So... Mm -hmm. Then we fill the small room there. Mm -hmm. Come on, this is where this is where um, those who are online the Bible study go. Is we fill the small room there, and and God's favor and hand was is on that ministry so great that we couldn't fit in the room after a while. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, y'all online, y'all know we went from the small room to this big space in its community. It it isn't really. It's not really a film thing. It is job of worship in the world. You come right after work. Mm. You don't have to change your clothes. We serve coffee. Um, um, Sister and, Della will bring some soup. <laughs> and you said you said it's community. Yes. Um, what I love is that um, something about our assignment is catalyst. Um, yeah. So so there are people that come on Tuesdays 
and we 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 don't make a play for anybody's members because everybody likes to to worship the way they like to right. worship. Right. But if we serve as a cheerleader and we fuel you up, and yeah. and um, in fact, this week in, in 52 Days of Prayer, we're praying for churches and the pastors and yeah. the vision. Yes. Go back to where you're planted, where the Lord sent yes. you, and raise fire and yes. hold up your pastor's Ooh. arms and allow the Holy yeah, Spirit right. to breathe vision <laughs> back into where you are because when we came the lord yeah. said something was hap was was happening and had to come through us and yeah. he also said that we would help um remind those that yes. got exhausted in yes. the fight that that this is it the time we've been waiting for right. we've been saying that coach was going to make a comeback for a long time yes. but this is it it's really it's really it. happening and okay. it's all over there are groups and churches and pastors yes. all over and yes. and the kindling is back and yes. some are exhausted but yes. the lord is bringing back the fire he is bringing back the excitement and we pray that people go to their houses of worship and yes. start revivals just start get revival. revived and um, just breathe life back yeah, into uh, the, the the move of God. Yeah, it's not about film, but it's about the universal church. And so we believe we've come alongside of those who had already been praying for years yes. for revival. Mm -hmm. They had already been speaking and laboring in the field. And so we just believe that we've come alongside to help push, mm -hmm. to help push. And so on Sunday, man, we were praying for we. Listen, we were praying for names. We 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 said names and churches yes. because we want the power and the fire to show up in the house of God where people so then will see God in a new, fresh and exciting way. Mm. And so um, that's, that's, um, we're in the middle of 52 days of prayer. And, and, and I'm, I will say that we're, we're having Pastor Dan Williams on Sunday. He's going to kick off praying for the government, mm -hmm. praying for our local municipalities. And so we're looking forward to that. All right. Well, look, let, let's take a break here because you you got a long list of people here. Nelson said, <laughs> I would like to meet you, Pastor. Nelson O'Hader, he's a minister as well. Sonora said she loves your book. That means I'm going to have to buy it as well. <laughs> Bernadette Runner said they are amazing people talking about y'all too. Amen. Amen. Just watching. Kendra Wilson said opera was in her last play in Coatesville. Oh, opera was in there. Opera. I was going to say yeah. it. I didn't know if I could handle it. Moment of silence. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Albert was in my living room singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's something else, something else. Okay, where am I at? Oh, man, we, we're, we're almost winding down, but my last two favorite questions always, no matter what guests I have, is I always like to ask, what has been some of the challenges on your journey? We'll take that. Well, well, you know what? Some of your biggest ones, not all of them, because I'm sure there's quite yeah. a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, really, the challenge is right now is the juggle. You know, it, there, there are. We've been doing ministry for a long time, but we just find a way to tunnel through. We just, we just get it done. But right now, the challenge is the juggle. You know, we're parents. You know, we're pastors now. Um, or we, we want to grow the people, but then you know we got to find that space so I can have my date night and my, you know, my time with my with my queen. So we're finding that the, the challenge is just to juggle right now in this season, um, making time and managing our time so that there's a healthy balance because I gotta be available as a husband, I'm a pastor, but I gotta be a dad too, right? And so, and so you know, when we get off here, it's, it's gonna be family night. Family night is Thursday night. So we'll, we'll all, no matter what, gather in the room and just look at each other if need be. <laughs> but, but it's the schedule. <laughs> That's all right. Come on, Katina, talk to me. Um, uh, right now, the challenge is, well, I'm going to say the Lord has sent us and, and it was, uh, it sounds deep and spooky, but, uh, it was prophesied over us. We're on our way. Uh, Eric is saying, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to do. We need help. We need help. He yeah. said that in the car on our way to an assignment to mm -hmm. minister. We get there and we minister, but then we sit, well, before we minister, the one that was ministering before us, he said to, um, he laid his hand on Eric and he said, the Lord is going to send you help, seasoned help. Amen. And um, the, we have the most amazing, amazing group of team. people. Our team is phenomenal. I'm the so gifts, grateful. talents, their heart, their passion yes. um, that they, they've come with to help with. So, so my challenge is, is all that's in our heads, mm -hmm. getting it out and pulsing it out. Um, right. 
but the people are there. Like Nehemiah, they are willing to do yes. the work yes. and then we are partnering and laboring together in it. But but that that's the thing is like I want to do it all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll try if I don't stop and say, hey, <laughs> go to bed. Bring it in, reel it in. That's good stuff, good stuff. Now here is how I always like to end. You've already, actually, you've already answered this question all throughout this time we've been talking. But my parting shot with every guest is to always ask them to, well, now there's two things. Usually I ask what part has faith played in your journey? But I'm not going to ask you all that because you've been telling us that since about eight o'clock. <laughs> but here's my other last question. As a parting shot, please leave our viewers with some insights, advice, suggestions, or anything that's on your heart that you want to lay to the viewers. No, there's no time limit. Feel free to talk. <clears throat> Whoever would like to go first, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to start out and I'll let my wife, you know, there's a passage of scripture in Ephesians 6, 10, uh, 11, 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm saying this because this is how I approach ministry. I approach ministry and life from top down. If, if you can grasp but that it says that there are principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, that's where you wrestle. So that means that, that our lives, is a, it's a spiritual warfare. And if you, can, if you can get spiritually mature, if you can realize that your brother is not your enemy, but there's a spiritual fight, then you'll, you'll understand that, that you don't, you're, you're often finding yourself not needing to be in your flesh, but spending more time in the spirit. Because whatever you do in the spirit will manifest in the natural. Because everything in life is a spirit. It is a spirit of witchcraft or the spirit of lust or the spirit, um, in, in the spirit of depression. So most of what we do, we grapple in the spirit. If you can learn to fight to warfare in the spirit, if you can have a prayer life, if you can understand the word of God to the degree where you, you're in relationship with him, you will start to live your life on a more on a, in a way that's more the more stable because you're no longer in your flesh. Mm. See, the enemy wants to, us to fight in our flesh, and every time we fight in our flesh, we lose yes. because we're emotional beings. Mm. <laughs> and he knows if I can get if I can poke you and get you in your flesh, you're gonna always I'm lose. The, yeah, <laughs> get you in your bag, you're gonna always lose the fight. And so I just approach life from the top. You know, I. I I, I try to lead a, a, a rigorous prayer life um, to stay in tune with God, to keep my ear, to have a relationship with him. Not just, not just religion, but relationship. And, and you'll learn, you will begin to learn that man, that God loves us, that God loves us. And he has such a purpose and a plan. Now, I'm, I'm going to so say bad. this, and I'm going to give some give away to my wife. Um, as I was sitting here talking, I heard finds that um, God said he's redeeming the time, <laughs> which means there's some things in you that seems like it's of old, but God says, I'm going to redeem the time and I'm going to give you what you lost over the years. <laughs> but there is, there is some things that you lost mm. while in the wilderness of your life. And I hear God saying that I'm going to redeem that and I'm going to give you some things that you've been longing for that he's going to really start to show off in you because, mm -hmm. um, because you've been through so much, but he sees your heart, he sees your passion, and he sees your work. And so he says, I'm going to redeem the things that you, of old that you thought were lost. Mm -hmm. so, so listen, he says, there's some stuff that you just need to blow the dust off of because he's going, he's going to restore it in your life. <laughs> he's going to restore it. Go, go, go right ahead. Whew. That's awesome. Um, I just want to um, just kind of encourage the people. Um, uh, Eric said it earlier a little bit. He touched on it. Um, church hurt. And yeah. um, I want us to get back to the heart of worship. And there's a song that says, I'm coming back to a heart of mm -hmm. worship where it's, it's all, all about, about you. you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. Mm -hmm. And church has become universally um, such a mess. Um, mm -hmm. It has, I want people to look past the mess and try it again, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I want you to try it again. Mm -hmm. Try the Lord again yes. with, without all the fluff. 
Yeah. Straight no chase or let him love on you. Uh -huh. Um and, and don't and 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 just I, just from what I've witnessed um, growing up in the church, I remember there was a gentleman that came to our um, our Bible study um, years ago, years ago, and he had a hat on. And this man, he was notorious. I mean, we ministered in the gut in Philadelphia, oh, a place Certainly where people not. people had forgotten about him. Was it Tom Brokaw? One of the they call it the Badlands in Philadelphia, yeah. uh, but we we call it uh, one nine one three three. We call it Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. So. Um, I mean, this guy came in and he was coming because his wife was coming, but he would never set foot in the church. So he's coming, he stops in and he has his hat on mm -hmm. and, and some deacons kind of rushed to him to let him know he needed to take his hat off. He wasn't going to disrespect, you know, service. And um, I, we missed an opportunity. He never stepped foot in our church again. Mm. But he is now a very active member in someone else's church. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that he didn't get that offended and embarrassed mm -hmm. um, that he gave the Lord a try for real. Yes. And mm -hmm. my point with all of that is we place so much um so much pressure on the stuff we teach kids how to march and and usher and that's great it's it's nice um but if they're in a back alley and they need to reach out to an all-loving god have we taught them how to reach god have we taught them how Thank to connect you, with the father you, who loves them have we taught them you, that and so i am telling you who feels like or have been made to feel like you're not enough that you're not good enough that you've got to clean yourself up before you come you, that, that is that is a that is a lie straight from the pit of hell and so i am praying that you would give him another try yes. let him speak to your heart and i am praying that his Thank overwhelming you, love would encompass you Thank that you, you would feel his love in the midnight Thank hour you. in the midst of your Glory. addiction in the midst of you feeling embarrassed because you're pregnant without a husband and yup it's your second one or your third one. I want you to try God again. I want you in that perverse uh, relationship realizing that it doesn't glorify God, but he loves you yes. and not the stuff you're in. And he can look at you God and minister Jesus. to you. I want you to try God, God one more time. And it's not about the church. If you go to a church that's teaching you good Bible, then go there. Yes. Go there and get that word, yes. eat that word, and grow and yes. be who God created you to yes. be. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, look, I'm gonna tell you something. Y'all about ready to give it. Y'all about ready for me to get a tithe and an offering up now. Come on, now. What, what just happened? Uh, oh my god. Oh, oh man, good stuff, good stuff. Hey, look, look, look. We've come to that hour. I, I, I am so blessed. <clears throat> I feel so blessed, and I feel honored that you have allowed me to zoom into your room. I want to thank y'all for sharing with all the viewers that which was on your heart. Mm -hmm. you shared who you are who you used to be. And that's what this is all about, man. It's about making Chester County smaller, where we all know each other. You know what I mean? Yes. You no longer have to go, go around and say, who's that? No, you know who that is. So you yes. know where to go to for what it is you need in life because it, it, we, we right can't do it by ourselves. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just so grateful that God has given me a microphone and a vision to bring those of you out there to other people that's out there. So with that being said, man, I just want to say, I want to say thank you. Uh, yes. This yes. will be replayed. Uh, remember, feel free to use my timeline for yes. the things that you guys are doing because there's one God, there's many buildings, there's one God, and there's yes. really only one church. Yes, yes, ah. that's it. So with that's that, it. I want to wish y'all good night. I'm going to say a few words to my viewers. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see if I got to say anything else before you go. Oh, they shout. They, they shout now film ministry like it's a gang or something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, so no, man, this ain't no gang thing. It's like, oh, like ministry. Yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, Crystal said, good job. Man. Oh, who, me? Asia's talking about hashtag film 19320. 2D Boyer. Straight out there from Lancaster and out that way, man. They say, God bless you. Our she's mirroring what you said. Try God one more time. And with that being said, I want to wish y'all good night. Have a great night and thank you once again. Take care. God bless y'all now. Bless Thanks. 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 All right, my my viewers, we're getting ready to call it a night. Y'all can stay on because I'm not gonna say much. Uh, you got your announcements next week. Don't forget, we have we have a different cast next week. This week was about physical health. <laughs>
spiritual health, mental health. I feel drained after this one. I'm telling you, we had mental health yesterday. They just was all in my head, making me feel like what? And now after this one, and then between Monday, uh, it's been a good week. Been a good week. Stay tuned to us next week. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will be coming back with City Town Talk. God bless y'all. And remember, if you have, if you would like to be on my show, you have a story. It doesn't have to compare to anybody else's story. You have a story. God has fearfully made you in his own image. He's taking you through things, not just to bring you through some stuff, but to minister to somebody else who's probably going through what you done went through. So stop playing and share that stuff and stop being selfish. Hit me up, inbox me and say, Fonz, I want to talk a little bit. Send me your bio, your photo, and we're going to get you on here. We're just ordinary people trying to do some extraordinary stuff through the grace of God. That's all, man. That's all we're trying to do. So I'm going to let y'all go. I want y'all to remember that Coachville is rising and Black Lives Matter. Peace out. <laughs>